bless the Lord my soul, his grace to thee proclaim, and all that is within me join to bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord my soul, his mercies bear in mind, Forget not all his benefits, the Lord to thee is kind. He will not always chide, he will with patience wait. His wrath is ever slow to rise and ready to abate. He pardons all thy sins, prolongs thy feeble breath. He healeth thine infirmities and ransoms thee from death. He clothes thee with his love, upholds thee with his truth. And like the eagle, he renews the vigor of thy youth. Then bless his holy name, <coughs> grace hath made thee whole, whose loving kindness crowns our days. Oh, bless the Lord my soul. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of wonders, whose purpose is to save the lost and bring back with rejoicing those who went away in tears. Have pity on us and open our eyes. Restore to your church the vision of a world made new and give to your people the strength to take up again the work of Christ in announcing the coming of your kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. Hear and I will speak. I will question you and you declare to me. I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. And the Lord restored the fortunes of Job when he had prayed for his friends, and the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then there came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before, and they ate bread with him in his house, and they showed him sympathy and comforted him for all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him and each of them gave him a piece of money and a gold ring. The Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, and he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. He also had seven sons and three daughters. He named the first Jemima, the second Keziah, and the third Karen Hapok. In all the land, there were no women so beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father gave them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, Job lived for 140 years and saw his children and his children's children four generations. And Job died old and full of days. The word of the Lord. Please pray the psalm responsibly by half verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will glory in the Lord. 
Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Many are the troubles of the righteous. He will keep safe all his bones. Evil shall slay the wicked. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> the former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priests, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. This he did once for all when he was weak, offered himself, that's right. For the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, 
Bar Timaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he's calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a theological statement about Jesus that says he loved us with a human heart. And sometimes it might be a little more difficult to grasp that because we think that because he's God that that aspect of his humanity that we talk about ourselves, about our heart, Uh, may not be as important. But we have to remember that, like, for example, in the second lesson today, as the letter to the Hebrews continues to talk about the great high priest who lives to make intercession for us, that he makes intercession for us because he's one like us in everything except for sin. And he knows that we continuously need his intercession with the Father. We continuously need his grace and his mercy and his forgiveness and his healing. We need to know his compassion so that we can come to understand that the kind of God that we believe in, that we follow, and that Jesus is for us, is not a God who is remote or a God who doesn't really care about our humanity or a God who doesn't really know what it's like to be one of us because Jesus was like us in everything except for sin. So he knows our life from the inside out. So to say that he loved us with a human heart means that he also was moved in his humanity to act with compassion, which is what we see demonstrated today in the gospel when Bar Timaeus, the son of Timaeus, 
shouts from the roadside, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And everybody tries to shut him up because he's disturbing the peace. People are trying to hear what Jesus is going to say, and this guy's over there making a big commotion. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And because Jesus was not annoyed, but rather his heart was moved with compassion, he has him called over, and then he says these very straightforward and can be very penetrating words, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus says, Lord, let me see again. And so Jesus says, you know, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And as he's going away, he realizes now he can see. His sight has been returned. And he wants to follow Jesus then up the road. Bartimaeus, when he finally gets the call from Jesus, you know, or gets the call to come over to Jesus, throws off his cloak. When he threw off his cloak, he was basically throwing off a previous way of life because in his blindness, he would not have been welcomed anywhere. In his blindness, he would probably have been sneered at, looked down upon. And so that's why he's by the roadside where people are coming so that as he has his cloak spread out, he can gather a few coins maybe an article of food or something that someone would give him in compassion. But he just throws it aside. So you can imagine the coins or whatever else was in there flying off. And he's not paying any attention to that. He's going to get over to Jesus because he knows in his heart, he knows from the deepest place in him that Jesus is going to do something for him. He, even though he was blind, unlike the other people who had been traveling around with Jesus and listening to Jesus and seeing the things that Jesus did, he's the one that could see without being able to physically see who Jesus really was and who Jesus could be for him. And so he experiences this in answer to that question of Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? We look at the reading from Job for a minute. It's from the very end of the book in chapter 42. Beginning in chapter 38 through chapter 42, God and Job are engaged in a conversation that before God would not engage in. First of all, he tells Job, as you may recall from last week, that uh, he really didn't need Job's permission to establish the world or didn't ask Job's advice of how to put things together all during the creation. And so he continues to address Job very bluntly, very strongly, but not in any way to shame Job except to point out to him that there are things that God knows and ways that God works that are above the ways that human beings think and do things. And so there are going to be things that he can't know. So in a sense, God doesn't say directly to Job in that moment, What do you want me to do for you? But he's basically telling Job what Job needs to know. He who had protested his innocence all the way along, even after his four friends take shots at him over and over and over again to convince him that he must have sinned because good people don't suffer. At least they don't suffer like you do, Job or like you have. God doesn't ask him, but God knows Job's heart and knows that Job's protests, Job's complaints, 
Job's confusion was coming because in his heart of hearts he knew that his vindicator lived, as he says in chapter 19, and that at the last he would see his vindicator with his own eyes and he will see his Savior. And because that was Job's faith, and he listens to what God has to say, and you know, if you look at that first lesson, you see that Job says something, and then he's quoting what God says, and it kind of goes back and forth for a moment or two, and it can be confusing. But at the end, Job says, these things are too great and wonderful for me, and, you know, I basically have been trying to act above my pay grade. And so I repent in dust and ashes. I repent of my, my attitude towards you, trying to demand from you, God, the explanation of everything that's happened to me. And in response to that, Without asking Job, God gives him everything back and more besides. It oftentimes does not happen that way when we deal with God. However, if we come honestly before him, we can say with confidence that if he asks, what can I do for you? and I tell him from my heart what he can do for me, he will do it for me. One way or another, he will do it for me. May not be exactly in the way that I ask, or when I ask. It may be that it's something that I'm asking in that moment from him that is outside of his scope of action at this particular moment in my life. But it doesn't mean that in his compassion and loving us with a human heart that he is not clued in to where we are. He's not clued in to hearing the deepest needs of our hearts, our lamentation, our, our confusion, and our deep need, whatever that deep need might be, or if we're asking for someone else. So that's why, in, on the one hand, even though we may have been disappointed in the past in asking because we didn't get what we asked for, we should still persist in acting, asking because the Lord still loves us with that human heart. It wasn't just for the time he was here on this earth, but is forever in his kingdom that he is loving us with that human heart, that he can feels compassion for us with that human heart. And it's, so it's that heart that we appeal to when he asks us, what do you want me to do for you? Today he does so love for us that we hope that he will always do. He offers us his forgiveness as we confess our sins. He offers us his presence as we gather two or three in his name and through the proclamation of his word, particularly the gospel, and in each of us who believe that he makes himself present and then in the gift of himself in Holy Communion, his body, his blood, given for us, given to us, to remind us that we truly do matter to him. And in his compassion, in his human heart being moved, he gives us these things that maybe sometimes we can't even think about asking for. But he gives them freely, willingly, and most of all lovingly, with compassion, with mercy, with a love and a care that we can scarcely begin to understand, but yet is there all the time for us, calling us. 
So whatever our cloak is that we might be clinging to, whatever the things that are around us that maybe we're letting take the place of an open face-to-face with our Lord. And then today, that Jesus is calling through this celebration of the Eucharist to each of us individually and to this community, that we let go of what's our security blanket and not worry about the things that we're setting aside to be able to face, be face to face with him. Maybe what he's asking us as a parish to do, saying to us, what do you want me to do for you? Maybe we want to say to him, we want to grow as a parish. And he might wonder, how do you mean that? We might answer, well, we want more people, but we also want to grow in faith, in hope, and in love. And if we're sincere in that response, we will grow. However God wishes it to be, we will grow. And as individuals, what I am going to invite you to do today is that sometime when you get home, You take a few minutes apart. Just come to some, you just be quiet for a few minutes. And imagine our Lord coming and standing right in front of you and saying, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want him? to do for you? What do I want him to do for me? Do I want to be less troubled? Do I want to be holier in my life, follow him more closely, more nearly, more dearly? Do I want to, you know, do I want him to make it possible for me to have, you know, better health if my health is an issue? Or that He would do something for those in my family because of difficulties or whatever they may be going through at this time? Do I want him to help me to find a new job or others in my family who need work, who don't have it right now? Or that we, you know, Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And we could say, I want peace in this world. We may not get it, at least not the way we would like to see it or have it, but it doesn't mean that he's not aware and not moved in the heart to try to bring that kind of thing about. So ultimately today, it's about our faith moving us to trust enough in Jesus to allow him to ask us, what do you want me to do for you? And to trust in the gift of the Spirit that will guide us to say, this is what I'd like you to do, Lord. Help me see again. Help me be healed again. Help me to love again, whatever it might be. And he will act. Let's now stand to profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Challenged by God's word in Christ, let us pray for the church, the world, and the whole creation. Eternal Counselor, guide the church along your paths of mercy. Direct it to be a refuge where all are genuinely welcomed and their gifts are celebrated. Bless and protect Justin of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Sean, our presiding bishop-elect, Paula, our bishop, and Mike, our rector, the Scottish Episcopal Church, their primate bishop, people, and clergy, for the Diocese of Chicago, especially for the growth and vitality of our congregations, and for our companion diocese of Southeast Mexico and Rank South Sudan. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal wisdom, strengthen the voices of those who cry out for change to unjust systems. Give lawmakers, judges, and all those who occupy seats of power listening and compassionate hearts. Foster justice and peace, especially in Nicaragua, between Russia and Ukraine, Israel and Gaza, and in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Iran, Bangladesh, India, the Philippines, Vietnam, Somalia, Yemen, Myanmar, China, and North Korea. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal nurturer, preserve the natural places for rest and rejuvenation. Guide the work of cons conservationists, park managers, urban planners, gardeners, and all caretakers of natural spaces. Attune us to the wonders we disregard or fail to notice, in particular places where famine and weather disasters have destroyed lives and drained people of hope. Remember, O oh Lord, especially the hurricane victims in Florida and the southeastern United States. And we pray for those who suffered loss, those who seek to relieve their distress, and all working in efforts of rescue, restoration, and recovery. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal compassionate one, train us to respond to the cries of those in any kind of need. Give encouragement and comfort to those who call out for relief from pain, grief, or oppression. Those on our intercessory prayer list, listed in the intention books or in today's bulletin, and those who have no one to pray for them. Assure them of your goodness that never ends, your grace that surrounds them on every side. We pray also for those who are voiceless, who have never known you, who are imprisoned by fear, that we witness to them your steadfast love, and for those we mention now. God of grace, hear our prayer. Eternal servant, grant vision and wisdom to the church so that those who are in need are not ignored. May the command of Jesus to love our neighbor sharpen our focus for work in the kingdom. Today we remember <clears throat> Liz Rogers, Ed Runner, Vicki Crostruza, Peter Donat, Leslie Camargo, and Sean Del Masso celebrating a birthday. Are there others? Any wedding anniversaries? God of grace. Hear our prayer. Eternal hope, may the legacy of the saints inspire us every day. We hold fast to the promise that we will be together in your presence forever. 
We remember Richard Powell, Howard Brock, Charles Charlotte, and those in your presence now, especially God of grace. Hear our prayer. Let us offer the prayer for the mission of our parish. Loving God, through your grace, guide us, the people of Calvary Episcopal Church, to joyfully carry out our mission of growing faith in your Son, Jesus Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may develop a living faith that deepens our understanding of you and strengthens our awareness of the needs of others. May we be a transforming light within our parish and within the community. All this we ask in the name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, Michelle. Peace be with you, Sherry. Peace, Joy. Peace, Joy. Today's altar flowers are given to the glory of God by Brenda Brenda and Tony Schroeder in celebration of Brenda and Julie's mother's birthday, Lori. Also, um, welcome our visitors who are with us today. If this is your first visit or first in a long time, we ask you to do us a favor of filling out a visitor card in the pew and to uh, either drop it in the collection plate or hand it to uh, either one of the ushers or to myself on your way out of church. And uh, please join us for fellowship following the service, for coffee and conversation. Just follow the crew out that way and then down the long hallway to the right. Um, Tomorrow evening is the... Monday of the fourth uh, week, or the last Monday of the month, I should say. And so at 7 o'clock tomorrow night, uh, the, mo- the, uh, yeah, the movie, excuse me, the meeting of uh, everything you wanted to know about the church will meet at uh, 7 o'clock. Also, next Sunday is the Sunday of the chili cook-off. And uh, if you are inclined to uh, enter your culinary uh, talents next week, please sign up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> please sign up on the list that's on the bulletin board, unless you've signed up in another way since. Also, uh, this coming week on Friday, November the 1st, is the Feast of All Saints. There will be a Eucharist in the morning 
on All Saints Day at 9.30, as I said. And then on Saturday, November the 2nd, which is All Souls Day, there will be morning prayer at 8.30 that will be inclusive of all of the names that we have been remembering these last 20 years or so. And so that will be prayed during that morning prayer. And then at 9.30 on Saturday morning, we'll celebrate the Eucharist for all the faithful departed. And then next Sunday is All Saints Sunday, since we have that uh, permission in the Episcopal Church to celebrate twice the uh, All Saints Day. And at that sun and services next Sunday, we will remember all those who have died since last All Souls Day, so since November 2nd last year. So if you do still have names that you would like remembered but uh, have not given them to the office yet, you can do that yet today. Um, just write it out and we'll give it to you. And you give it to us and we'll include it next week. Um, <clears throat> Also, I'd like to take this opportunity to express our sympathy to uh, Sue and Bill Van Meter. Uh, Sue's father, uh, Charles Richard Charlotte, uh, passed away this past week. Um, his funeral will be private, but it'll be a week from this coming Friday. And so Sue is here, so if you want to personally express your sympathy to her, and to Bill, you certainly can do that. Also, you may not have heard that last th that we announced last week that Peter Oram, the father of Krista Oram Keller and father-in-law of Craig Keller, both members of our parish, um, passed away a couple of weeks ago now, and uh, his funeral will be. Uh, coming up, but we don't know exactly when. And uh, that's because they have to hear yet from their family coming from Denmark um, when they're going to arrive and what their travel plans actually are. But when it does happen, that funeral will be held at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in St. Charles on Route 25, Fifth Avenue, just up the street and across from uh, St. Charles Episcopal Church. And that's because Peter belonged to uh, St. James Episcopal Church in West Dundee, but the church there is too small to accommodate not only family, but also fam friends and other uh, people who will come to express their condolences. Um, also, a little thing about next week is that next Sunday morning at 2 a.m., we have to turn our clocks back one hour. So if you do it before you go to bed at night on Saturday, uh, you'll still show up on time for things. You won't either be too early or too late. Uh, so I just keep that in mind as a public service announcement. Um, and today the Red Bull collection uh, is specifically for those in need who are struggling with utilities and rent and food insecurity. We will also be having on Thanksgiving Day, the community meal that we have done for the last several years. Um, and that will follow the service on Thanksgiving Day. So around 11.30, quarter to 12 on Thanksgiving Day, that meal will be served. It's open to the community. Uh, next week, there will be a sign-up sheet uh, if you would like to be present and, and share in the meal for you to sign up for that, or if there'll be something that you will bring uh, also to share, or if you just want to bring something because you have other Thanksgiving Day obligations and can't participate in that meal, that's also something that you can note. 
anything from anybody else. Yes, Michelle? What? How did it go yesterday? Yes. I have no idea. Was you teaching? I was at work. I was at work too. I was at a funeral. Oh, good gravy. Well. Well, did anything else? It seems like it went well. I didn't see it. Uh, Megan? Okay. okay. One of the mothers is here. She said it went well. Good, good. Thank you. I didn't hear any complaints anyway. Yes, Terry. I have a question that my Wait a minute. Seven dollars, even. even. Just to get in, and then you can eat as much as you want. But we don't sell Alka-Seltzer <laughs> or any kind of Rolades or anything. I thought that'd get a bigger laugh, anyway. Let's uh, join together then in the uh, offertory prayer. <clears throat> Look upon us, O God, as we prepare your holy table and grant that our service may be directed to your glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. 
At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return. Through, the pro through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel or be seated. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by Him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Remembering now his work of redemption, and offering you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in His name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we give honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. <clears throat> and now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on Him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <clears throat> Just uh, again, as a reminder, we receive Holy Communion at the communion rail. And uh, you, you approach the rail. If you can kneel, please kneel. If you can't, remain standing. If all you want is a blessing, then just cross your arms in this fashion. Um, also, if you um, want to receive one of the little communion cups here, the chalice that has the precious blood on the top and the body of Christ on the bottom, uh, just extend one hand when you come to the rail, and I will say the body and blood of Christ to you. You can respond, amen, and then I'll put it in your hand. And if you do receive this, I ask you to consume it at the rail before you get up and then walk through the side door. And you can deposit the empty containers in the two plastic bowls that are in front of the front pew on this side. Or you can receive uh, communion in the hand, uh, right hand over left at the rail. Or, and then you can also receive from the chalice um, that Michelle will be ministering uh, as well. Okay. But before that, as I've just been reminded, uh, I'll offer the act of spiritual communion, particularly for those not able to receive today or the, and, and those who are on via Zoom. In union, blessed Jesus, with the Christian faithful across the world, gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in my heart in the fullness of your strength. Be my wisdom and guide me in right pathways. Conform my life and actions to the image of your holiness. And in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. <clears throat> the gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <clears throat> Go 
blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
every barrier down now to be thine yea thine alone O Lamb of God I come I come just as I am am of thy great love the breadth length depth and height to prove here for a season then above O Lamb of God I come I come Let us pray. Lord, may these holy gifts accomplish within us the salvation they embody, so that what we do in sign and symbol we may receive in fullness and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.